Hi guys, my name is Holly. I'm an artist and I wanted to share this new palette that I made. Uh, I, I bought some M. Graham colors um, a couple videos ago and I swatched them in my sketchbook, but I wanted to use some of those again to make a new color palette for myself, just of my favorite colors and then um, use them in specifically in a uh, painting that is inspired by a recent rental house that me and my family stayed at in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm not gonna talk a lot about uh, the colors that I chose, the reason why I chose them. It's just that these are the colors that I use most of the time. It's not a very well-rounded palette, but it is uh, colors that that I use so uh, in the uh, painting that I'm going to show after this is uh, you'll see that I used mostly watercolors uh, I didn't use any color that was out of this uh, color palette I did use a little bit of uh, colored pencil and just in the fox and uh, the fox's clothing and then I also used one Posca pen and it was the pea green. And I actually didn't end up using that cobalt teal by Core. Uh, I noticed that the green Posca pen was a pretty close color to it, so I just used the Posca pen instead. So I used a photo that I took from the rental house as my um, reference photo. It was of a, a room with uh, the front room and it was looking into another room and the other room was uh, brighter in color and I really liked the way the, the shadows in the, the main part of the picture just led the eye to the next room. So I wanted to try to capture that in this painting. Uh, one of the other things that I really really liked about this house was I don't know the the modern chair that it had in the front room It was uh, green in color, but for my painting I painted it orange. I, I Like orange chairs. I don't know why we all have our our things, you know so I, I Love putting patterns in uh, pictures when I'm doing things just for myself. I made up this pattern and I've used it in several of my paintings. I used the Posca pen and I actually did a couple different layers of the Posca pen to make it opaque so you couldn't see the lines that, uh, that I had to draw to make a solid color with the Posca pen. So I started the painting out by um, masking off with uh, washi tape that doorway where the brighter colors are gonna be and I just did this whole section of the front room and that indentrine blue and uh, I used all translucent colors over it so that the the shadow would come through on it and then I went ahead and painted the next room and I wanted to bring the Posca pen color from the pattern that I did on the right side of the painting into the next room. So I did these uh, subtle little lines on the wallpaper uh, just to, to make it uh, congruent. I didn't use much colored pencil at all because um, I just wanted to put in where I was going to have the different features on the fox. I, I'll usually only use it if I need to get some detail in there that I can't achieve with uh, the regular medium that I'm using. In this case, it was uh, the watercolor. I did a lot of different colors layered over each other for this chair. I started with the new gimboge and then I added the transparent pyrrole orange and I also had some layers of the indenthrine blue. 
as the shadow. I, I just wanted to have a lot of depth in the chair since it was one of my favorite parts of the, the painting. You see, I used the PBO masking fluid. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I used the masking fluid to cover up a little bit of sunlight that was on the chair in the photo. And after I took the masking fluid off, there was a very harsh line from the, the darker part that I did onto the, the highlight area. And if that happens to you, you just go through with a wet brush and soften, just kind of go over that uh, harsh line with a wet brush and uh, it'll really soften the line and uh, it'll end up looking like it's supposed to be there instead of uh, looking more like a mistake. Also make sure when you take the masking fluid off of your painting that the paint around it is completely dry or else you'll end up uh, getting wet paint on uh, streaked through your, your lighter colored parts that you wanted to preserve. So I decided for the base of the chair it was um, it was a reflective material, but I didn't want to go crazy with the colors uh, in the base of the chair because I didn't want it to be so busy that it called too much attention to itself. So I made the base just monochromatic. You'll see me finish it in a little bit. Uh, it's the Indian 3 in blue. I really like that color. Here I painted the background of the over the mantle painting. I wanted to make it very washed out looking. So I just covered the area with uh, water and then dropped color into it. And here is an extremely speeded up part where I did the color pencil. There's just like so many different colors of reds and pinks that I put into this area. And eventually I just uh, went over it to the point where it matted down the raised areas in the paper uh, so that it, it gets a, a smooth look to it. And uh, you can get some really good detail with uh, the color pencil and get different effects that you can't necessarily do with the watercolor. And here's a very short clip of real time coloring with the color pencil. It is actually a very slow process because you wanna make sure the lines go in the right spots. And then, sadly, I got to a point where I realized that I had not made the whole front room dark enough. So I had to go back and individually, with each section, darken it up in some way or other, either by adding the Indian 3, three uh, wash of blue over it, or uh, in the case of the fireplace, uh, darker browns. And it, it was nerve wracking because uh, I didn't want to smear the previous layers. So I had to make a, uh, make a glaze over it with as few passes as possible. And uh, yeah, I, I went over the whole thing at least another couple times just darkening it up because I didn't want to go whole hog to begin with and darken it too much and then not be able to fix it from there. So just a, a bunch of one by one, layer by layer, making it a little bit darker. And then I noticed while looking through the footage that I just, I guess I just decided to do this one, this part as dark as I possibly could. I think I was just uh, done with uh, adding shaded layers. I just, painted it dark and I ended up liking the color so no no problem there after that it was just a matter of uh, getting all the little details done that you leave to the end of the painting uh, some lines darkened or highlights added or 
uh, lines uh, softened and just getting all the the little details done there's just so many of them that I made a list and I went through one by one and I checked them off as I went here were a couple little areas that I had a wet paintbrush and I removed some color from it to add details to the area so neat little trick and uh, it darkens the lines around them too it uh, adds a little bit of dimension and then I uh, this image here is um, actually an image that I made some little cut prints of it's a little happy sandwich so I put that in the painting over the mantle and a little highlight in the eye and that's about it.